In the final installment of our Introducing New Senators series, I spoke with Senator Jean Dornick, the only newly elected Republican from Greater Minnesota to join the Senate. You defeated DFL incumbent Dan Sparks in the, rec in the November election to represent District 27, which includes Austin and Albert Lee and your hometown of Hayfield. Sparks held that seat since 2002. Why do you think the voters made a different choice this time? Well, first, I want to thank for the opportunity, Shannon. So thank you for having me. Uh, good question. You know, it was a two cycle race. I, mean, I, I entered in 2016. And uh, anybody knows you have to have name recognition and choice. And so choice is always good. So I worked really hard to get my name out there. And also, I'm a different kind of Republican. I mean, I grew up on a dairy farm, I had the union background and a small business owner. So I fit the, the district really well. And then I, uh, being out there that long and being a small business owner, I could, uh, campaigning is meeting people. So I campaigned it actually for four years, uh, worked, and then I just talked to people. And that's what it is, listening, communicating, hearing their uh, issues. And uh, so that's what we did. And you mentioned union, and, and I wanted to follow up on that because I asked this question of Senator Jason Merrick, um, a Republican uh, who entered in a special election 2019. He's a union electrician. You are or were um, in the Carpenters Union. And I, I wonder about that because traditionally the DFL is the stronghold of the union. And I wonder, do you see that changing? Is, is that the union and the DFL, is, is there something changing in that? Absolutely. When I entered the union in the late 80s, uh, all my work and the other trades were strong Democrats. And it just seemed like in the last four or five, six years, things have started to change. Um, I think part of it is that uh, the DFL has kind of stopped listening to us trades workers. Um, I don't know if it's a, I'm not saying that's intentional, but uh, the Republicans have wanted to, to reach out to us. And, and so when I ran in 2016, I was actually endorsed by my uh, Carpenters Union, which was exciting that they, because I didn't think they would, I didn't know. And so they're excited. And then in 2020, I got their endorsement again. And I had some other trades that would have endorsed, but just with uh, the uh, COVID and the uh, bonding bill being hold out, held up and kind of the bickering, they just wanted to stay out of it. So definitely there's uh, a change. And then uh, it was sad to see President Biden, the first thing he did was uh, shut down union jobs. And, and that's just not, uh, you know, he killed those jobs and that doesn't help us um, wanting to vote for him. And so, and also in line three, that's an important project in Minnesota that, that we support. And uh, so that's definitely there. I think they're not listening as well as they should. Your biography states that you lost your job as a carpenter in the Great Recession and then that you worked really hard to start a business that is now successful. So basically what happened to you was an unprompted career change. And now here you have another career change as you enter the Senate. I wonder it, how these experiences will shape you as a lawmaker. Yeah, it's a really good question. Uh, first, I want to credit my parents because we know that family is, you know, where we learn the, I did anyway, hard work, responsibility, and then moving forward to um, the, our family, that's the same ethic, work ethic and working hard. Um, so as a business owner, uh, we listen to our constituents or our, not constituents, our uh, people we work for, and then being as a, a family. So I think in the business uh, world, you're a public, you're kind of a servant. You're not a public servant, but you're serving community and the family you're serving. And then as you transition into public service, you're still doing a lot of the same things. You're listening, you're communicating, and you're standing up. And sometimes you got to make those hard decisions. Like this year, we're going to have to make some hard ones in the, uh, the budget year. So public service is just kind of an extension of what I've done in the, in the past with serving the community. You wrote uh, on your campaign website that one of your goals is, quote, standing up for our farmers and agribusinesses who continue to suffer under high taxes and overregulation. What kind of change would you like to see in this regard? So it's not just, it's all businesses too, not just farm, but uh, I think government and private sector partnering, partnering together. And I think uh, sometimes the government maybe means well, but they sometimes kind of come down kind of hard on 
the MPCA is coming down on some of the farmers and some of the communities, um, Elbert Lee is with their wastewater treatment plant, trying to upgrade. Just some of that more communicating and working together and trusting local officials and because they're elected and they know, so not one size fits all, not top down, but listening, partners, partnering, partnering together to solve these problems. Um, over the summer, the Albert Lee Tribune uh, published an opinion that was written by the chairman of the Freeborn County Republicans. And I just thought it was curious because he devoted an entire paragraph to saying that you believe in term limits and that you'll only serve as long as a citizen should. Um, so it just prompted me to wonder, is among your constituents, is there a concern about uh, lawmakers who, who spend too much time at the legislature? And are you committed to not necessarily serving as, as long as you can? I, I just wonder why he wrote that, what you think about that. You know, it was a big thing on, as I went door to door at term limits, people are just kind of get fed up of, and it's more of a federal issue because they leave the community and they're, they're not as close. We're in, in Minnesota, we're a, a citizen run government. So we're back in the community and stuff. So it's not a, as big a deal, but I still, for myself, I kind of committed to 12 years, but you know, we have uh, every, well, this, this is a two year term. So I'll have an election in, in two years. So we'd have to win all those. So but I think that uh, fresh energy and new ideas is good. I think this year was really, people were kind of fed up with the, the, um, the, um, the status quo and they wanted something new. And I think, uh, like I said, I think I bring fresh energy and new ideas. And so, yeah, so that's my commitment. Uh, if, if I would continue to win uh, 12 years for me personally, but I do see some benefit for some people staying in longer because there's a lot to know here. So it does take time to, uh, be able to be a good legislator because there's stuff to learn. So, so that's kind of my commitment. It's just a personal commitment. Now, you are the only Republican from greater Minnesota in this freshman class of senators. So I wonder what message you think your constituents want you to bring here to the Capitol? Well, you know, you got to remember that uh, I think the message has been being brought because there was only five uh, Senate seats in greater Minnesota that were, that are still in Democrats or the DFLs um, had that. Um, so two of them uh, left and came to independence. And so, and I won my uh, race. And so there's only two left. So I think they're saying that uh, one size doesn't fit all. We're not Minneapolis, start listening to us and let's work together on these problems. Cause they're, it's, it is, uh, one Minnesota, but we need to, uh, and I think I bring that too as more of a uh, working together. And so that's what I attempt, I'm gonna try to do, do my best. And finally, before we go, um, you are father to 12 kids. You mentioned working for your family, being of service to your family in an earlier answer. And judging by your campaign photos, uh, it looks like your kids were helpful to you in the campaign. How did they feel about having their dad as a state senator? Well, they loved it. In 2016, when we started, before I was uh, considered it, we, we had our family meeting and we said, hey, this is what we're thinking. Um, it's going to be hard. This is what it's going to look like. And of course, they're, yay, let's let's do it. It's exciting. And um, so they thought I was going to win in 2016. I knew that nah, probably not going to happen. But, you know, I, we worked hard enough to win, but uh, we had a little over 45 percent of the vote. And so we decided to do it again. So that would have been really hard on them to lose this time. But uh, again, I believe that we just do our best and uh, whether we win or lose, it's about doing our best. But yes, they're very excited. They were very involved. Uh, lots of parades, lots of fairs. We had not this, not 2020, obviously, but uh, they enjoyed it and uh, they're very happy. Senator Gene Dornick, I wanna thank you so much for taking the time. All right, thank you.